When I saw Chris Brown the first time at the party, he was acting weird, extremely weird. Actually, why are you that surprised about these allegations come to light? I mean, I, it, for me, it's like it's just reliving the whole situation over it. And, I'm, and you say you're very surprised and shocked by what's now come out. I wouldn't be shocked if I'd seen what happened to Cassie at first hand and the way you did. I think this guy's a monster. Things just got wild. According to sources, Diddy is dropping names, and guess who appears to be on the list? Chris Brown. This comes with some serious buzz about big changes ahead. Fans are left wondering what this means for both artists. Are they teaming up, or is there trouble brewing? And, I'm, and you say you're very surprised and shocked by what's now come out. I wouldn't be shocked if I'd seen what happened to Cassie at first hand and the way you did. I think this guy's a monster. What's going on behind the scenes? Is this the start of a new chapter or the end of an era? Apparently, more details are coming out. Chris Brown punched me in the face. He secretly grabbed my phone and I got his card out of the party. It looks like Diddy's name dropping could mean serious trouble for some big names, as this might just spell the end of their careers and reputations. Sean Diddy Combs used to be the talk of the town in celebrity nightlife, attracting a star-studded guest list. But now, with these new allegations of SA surfacing, these notorious parties are facing some serious scrutiny, casting a cloud over what really went on during those wild nights. As we highlighted earlier, one other name grabbing everyone's attention in Hollywood right now is Chris Brown. Recently, a woman has come forward accusing him of being involved with Diddy's parties and it's making things even messier for both Diddy and Chris Brown. In the new documentary, Chris Brown, A History of Violence, several women step up to share their personal stories about the R and B star. Among them is a woman referred to as Jane Doe, who alleges that he aid her back in 2020 a claim his attorneys have strongly denied within the documentary. Even coming forward as a Jane Doe, some people still found out who I was, the anonymous woman says, adding that she received death threats after the incident. Coming forward with this now, I just hope I can shed light on what really happened. In the documentary, Doe shares that she'd recently moved to Los Angeles, eager to kickstart her dance career when she ended up on a Miami trip with a friend in December 2020. On December 30th, she got a call from a familiar contact inviting her to join Sean Diddy Combs on his yacht. When she arrived, she noticed Chris Brown was also there. Doe recalls feeling like it might be a sign. Maybe he'd be able to guide her, offer advice, or even help her along her career path. We had talked and he had handed me a drink. I'm not even sure this is when my memory starts getting a little bit weird, she claims. I don't remember if I saw him pour it, but I just drank it and he just hands me another drink. As I'm standing there, I did start to feel tired and my body was feeling a little heavy. In the documentary, Brown's attorneys firmly deny Doe's allegations, calling them completely fabricated. In his characteristic brash manner, even Chris Brown came out to bash the woman. Somebody just let me get a check or start some I don't know this old looking This is old, like dusty. As for Sean Diddy Combs, currently jailed on charges of racketeering, ST, and transportation for P, his attorney also declined to comment. According to Doe, Brown eventually led her to a bedroom that night. I remember I did lay back and I'm like, why can't I get up? Next thing I know, he was on top of me and I couldn't move and I said no, and then I felt him Next thing I knew, he was inside me. Doe, in tears, alleges, claiming that he ejaculated inside her. I was so disgusted. Came to Vegas, she probably came to my room, it was too ugly to get in. Doe recalls that during the alleged incident, Brown took her phone and even sent a text to himself saying, most girls I think would be happy. I didn't want that, this is not what I wanted, she says. Afterward, Doe admits she kept talking to the Run It singer hoping to get some kind of clarity. It wasn't until she began therapy she claims that she came to terms with what happened, recognizing it as SA, I know it for a fact. Instead of telling myself that it wasn't, it was. It was R, she claims. In the documentary, Doe shares that a legal team initially reached out to her to help build a case. However, in 2022, a judge dismissed it without prejudice, citing a lack of prosecution according to court documents obtained by people. 
somehow you have no value or any worth to me if you're somehow not attracted. So it wasn't enough to physically assault her, but then to verbally and emotionally assault her on social media. Reportedly, Doe's lawyers withdrew from the case after police discovered text messages between her and Brown following the alleged incident, as previously reported by Rolling Stone. Now, however, People confirms that one of Doe's former attorneys, Ariel Mitchell Kidd, is representing her once again. In a statement, Mitchell Kidd says, I adore my client and I believe what happened to her is 100% true. I feel that I failed her as an attorney because I couldn't make her comfortable enough with me in such a short period of time where she felt 100% comfortable being forthcoming with me. In another part of the documentary, a woman named Lizzie Ann Gutierrez opens up about an alleged encounter with Brown in 2016. In an exclusive clip, Gutierrez claims she was invited back to his hotel room in Las Vegas after one of his shows, where he allegedly punched her in the face. When I saw Chris Brown, he was acting weird, extremely weird. And then I decided to grab my phone and take a picture of him, she claims in the documentary, once I got my phone, he saw me with my phone. Chris Brown punched me in the face. His security grabbed my phone and I got escorted out of the party. I'm not saying it was right what I did with my phone. I know that, but that doesn't give you the right to punch me in the face. And once I got my phone, he saw me with my phone. Chris Brown punched me in the face. His security grabbed my phone and I got escorted out of the party. Chris Brown, A History of Violence, talks about years of abuse allegations surrounding the forever singer, highlighting his longstanding legal issues. Brown has faced multiple assaulty accusations over the years, with the most publicized incident involving his ex-girlfriend, Rihanna. After a February 9, 2009 altercation with Rihanna, Brown was charged in March with felony A and making criminal threats. He pleaded guilty to a felony three months later. His sentence included community labor, five years of probation, and domestic violence counseling. Despite this, Rihanna confirmed they had reconciled in January 2013, but the reunion lasted only a few months. In 2013, Brown entered rehab to tackle issues with anger and substance abuse. Later in 2017, his ex, Karicha Tron, obtained a five-year restraining order against him after showing threatening texts in court and alleging physical A. Recently, social media has been buzzing with a rumored freak session list, drawing comparison to the infamous Epstein list. This alleged list links some big names like Leonardo DiCaprio, Jay-Z, Beyonce, Ashton Kutcher, Paris Hilton, Howard Stern, Russell Brand, Mariah Carey, Jennifer Lopez, Russell Simmons, Usher, and Megan Fox, to gatherings hosted by P. Diddy. As expected, this news has gone viral. Usher and Pink have even deleted their posts on X, only adding fuel to the frenzy. Recently, Usher tweeted that his ID was hacked, just as there were claims that videos resurfaced showing him at Diddy's flavor camp. The account got hacked and damn y'all ran with it. Usher wrote on X at 6.13 p.m. ET on Sunday, following a surge of commentary and theories about his account history being erased. His previous posts were also restored at that time. See you tonight at Intuit Dome. Some folks on X have been chatting about the timing of what seems like a social media cleanup, especially since Usher has ties to Diddy. Remember, Diddy was arrested last week on some serious charges related to federal ST and racketeering. Now, many of you know that Usher and Diddy go way back, with Diddy being the executive producer for Usher's very first album back in 1994. But that's not all, because amid the conspiracies, a clip of Khloe Kardashian resurfaced where she admitted attending Diddy's NKET parties. She said, I got on a plane at 5.30 a.m. Well, this party, I think half the people there were buttoning. She playfully teased Courtney, saying that the Lemmy founder would have loved it. I got on a plane at 5.30 a.m. This party, I think half the people there were butt naked. You would have loved it. Courtney, unfazed by Chloe's comment about guests undressing at the party, turned to Hawk and asked if she had met Chloe's new group of friends at the event. 
No. Well, kind of, Hawk replied, prompting Chloe to quickly interject, stop, stop talking. The celebrities who attended Diddy's parties and stayed silent during his arrest have sparked numerous conspiracy theories about celebrity transparency. Since his arrest, not even his closest associates, like Jay-Z and Beyonce, who were often seen at Diddy's gatherings, have come forward in his defense. This silence has led people to suspect that there is more to the story than meets the eye. Their quietness suggests they might not want to be part of the scrutiny Diddy is facing right now. Recently, during an event, Selena Gomez mentioned Diddy during her speech, which shocked many fans. Selena was asked to present the award to a girl named Didi Hirsch, who's known for running a mental health hospital. But when it came time to announce the winner, the Calm Down hitmaker accidentally said the name of the famous rapper Sean Diddy Combs instead of Didi, which definitely raised some eyebrows among fans online. Not long after, the Rare Beauty founder quickly apologized to the crowd and said, I am so sorry. For those who might not know, Diddy has some connections to Selena's ex-boyfriend, Justin Bieber. According to media reports, the two used to hang out at parties more than a decade ago during Diddy's infamous get-togethers. There was a time when getting an invite to one of Sean Diddy Combs' parties was like gold in the entertainment world. The guest lists were nothing short of star-studded, featuring names like Justin Bieber, Mariah Carey, Paris Hilton, and Jennifer Lopez. Attending one of these bashes was a golden opportunity to mingle with A-listers. In fact, Jay-Z and Beyonce even dropped new music at his events. When Diddy winked at you and said, come into the VIP section, you knew you were gonna have a really good night. Rob Shooter, who worked as a publicist for the rapper at the height of his fame, told BBC News in an exclusive interview. While numerous pieces of evidence have piled up against many celebrities who have been spotted at Diddy's parties, it's only a matter of time before the next celebrity gets arrested, sending shock waves through the world and making headlines again. However, many fans predict that Diddy won't stay silent for long. He will likely speak up to protect himself as well, potentially exposing everyone involved in the crimes and those f sessions. While the spotlight has shifted to Chris Brown to be the next target to be investigated, Many fans are anticipating new names to be dropped soon. Fans are on the edge of their seats, wondering what's coming next for their favorite stars. Are we in for new collaborations or is more controversy on the way? As things start to settle, it's clear that the entertainment world is watching closely, eager to see how this all plays out. One thing's for sure, the stakes have never been higher. That's it for today's video, guys. Thanks for watching.